So I often get asked why I call my study programs excellentist programs. Here's why. Um, first of all, I'm well aware of the fact that excellentist is not classically a, it's not a word that you're going to find in the English dictionary, although I really think it should be. Excellentist and excellentism are kind of used very colloquially and informally in some psychology circles, but it's not a real word, but I like it and I'm going to use it. So what does it actually mean? The reason that I've adopted it or the reason that I use it is because most students that I work with and I myself um, really struggle with perfectionism. Being a perfectionist is a double-edged sword and I think in a lot of cases we kind of use oh I'm a perfectionist as another way of saying I like to do things properly. You know I like to get things right and there's a little bit of a worry that if you don't have a drive for perfectionism, you know, if you're not a perfectionist, there's a little bit of a worry that you'll become complacent and not really achieve. So a lot of people I've spoken to have kind of had this concern of, yes, Yvonne, but if I lose that perfectionist tendency, then maybe I won't have the same drive to achieve. And I think that's quite sad because we sort of think that the opposite of perfectionist is laziness, you know? And I totally understand that. Um, also, perfectionists for a while were seen as, you know, quite a valuable trait for an accountant to have because it means you pay attention to detail, you want to get everything right. Um, and that obviously, you know, that's great for, for your clients. More recently, though, we, we understand that there's a lot of stress and a lot of uh, negative stuff that comes with being a perfectionist that's really not that great for you. So I use the word excellentism or excellentist as a way of saying, let's get rid of the perfectionist tendencies. That does not mean that you do not need to strive for excellence. In fact, if you strive for excellence, if you focus on excellence instead of perfectionism, you're actually going to get more done and you're going to achieve more. So for me, excellentist is a great way of saying, drop the perfectionism. Because perfectionism comes with anxiety. I'm so worried I'm not going to get it right. What if I don't get this right? What are other people going to think of me? Um, and we plan and we plan and we plan and we want the perfect plan so much so that we actually end up not doing stuff. It's called analysis paralysis. We're so busy making the perfect plan. It's got to be right. We've got to have the perfect study schedule. We've got to have the perfect budget. We've got to have the perfect work. We've got to have the perfect everything. We spend all this time planning and we delay the doing because we're so worried that if we don't have the perfect plan, then the implementation, the execution is not going to be perfect and everything's going to fall apart. But there's also a delay of like, I know I can't really do this perfectly and I'm worried that I can't really do it perfectly. So I kind of don't want to start. Whereas an excellentist is someone who will look at the job and say, what is required to get the job done? What does it take to actually do this job properly? And let me work backwards and make sure that I do that. Now, in some instances, it might seem a little bit subtle, but that's a very big difference. Striving for this intangible sense of I must get everything right all the time, I must be perfect, that nobody can criticize me. That is very different from saying, let me be realistic about what it takes to get this job done. And then work backwards. My students will tell me things like, well, I'm not really a perfectionist, Yvonne, because I don't get really fantastic marks. Um, in, in my subject. And that's really not a definition of being a perfectionist. Perfectionism is about like, I want to know all my stuff. I want to feel comfortable with everything. I've got to be okay with everything. I don't want people to know that I'm struggling. Whereas an excellentist will say, look, I need to pass that exam. I want to do well on that exam. What do I need to do to get that done? Well, uh, these are the topics. These are the skills that are required for those topics. I'm struggling with that skill and I'm struggling with that topic. And so I really need to get some help there. And if your focus is on achieving the task, it's not going to bother you to go and ask someone for help again and again and again, if necessary, it's not going to bug you. You're not going to be afraid to give something a try and go, well, I really need to give this a try now. Um, and see how this goes because I want to make some progress here. Whereas a perfectionist is generally too scared to try something because I'm going to disappoint myself. I'm going to disappoint other people. I'm going to, you know, I'm worried about what this means for whether or not I can do this, etc. So for me, I kind of use, I use excellentist as almost like an opposite of perfectionism. I want you to strive for excellence. I want you to achieve, but I don't want all the negative stuff that comes with being a perfectionist. And you don't either. So that's why I call my program 
excellent as pro. I want you to be an excellent student, not a perfect student. Because that, man, that's just impossible. It's unattainable, unachievable. It's not going to get you anywhere. High levels of anxiety. And generally, we get less done. So I want you to be an excellent student. 